Wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus. Amen. I'm just going to wait for at least one person to come on. And then we're going to start with a thought and some prayer. And, um, and then others can watch us later. Praise God. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. Anyway, we're going to start in a moment. I'm just going to wait. I see one person is watching. Now we're going to wait for at least one more. I know the brother Steve is going to come on board. So we're going to start. Anyway, praise God. Anyway, let's open up in prayer and we'll take it from there. I have a good thought. Um, we are not a church, but we are an outreach. So um, we are not a church. We are an outreach. So, Father God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord, for this time, and you just commit it into your hands. And, Lord, I have a thought, and, um, and we're going to speak that thought out, and I hope that it helps us in this hour to understand what the gospel was, what the gospel is, what the Great Commission is, what the Great Commission was, uh, for us to be in a place of obedience and for us to be in a place of a right standing with God. So, Father, I, I commit this time into your hands. I come against all the powers of hell in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, we resist the enemy in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of witchcraft, antichrist, Ahab, Jezebel, all of those spirits of God. Oh, God, because we're at war, but we're on the winning side. And we thank you, Father, that we have power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us. Thank you, Lord, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Thank you, Lord, that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. And I ask, Father, now that you will cover us with your precious blood. And Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place, in this time of the word and prayer of the thought that you have placed in my heart. In the name of Jesus, anoint us afresh and uh, speak to us. For your word says, to him that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. And I pray that today we will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. So may the Lord bless you and uh, thank you for joining us. We have four people there and that's enough for me to start. So um, God has been dealing with, with us and with me. And, you know, uh, I want to, I wanna, um, uh, first of all, start with this. The more time you spend with God, the more, the better you will be to hear His voice. You see, it's hard to hear the voice of God when we're running here and there and everywhere. And we live in a time now that we need to uh, spend quality time with the Lord for us to hear clearly and for us to be in the right standing with God for the Holy Spirit to lead us. So um, uh, just to, uh, before I get started, um, you know, God is leading us now to a, a new chapter here in, in Canada, here in Halifax. Uh, when everybody's moving into the church, into the buildings, into the church building, God, the Holy Spirit, is getting us out of the building. <laughs> right so which is contrary right and uh, you know because you know the buildings can be a blessing but the buildings can be the worst thing for us you know and that's the reason that that's the reason that the, the title for this uh, topic today is fresh okay the, the title is this is that we are not 
at church, we are an outreach. So, Brother John, here in this region, we are no longer at church. We are no longer school or whatever. But we are an outreach. And if you're following me on Facebook, I put a, a posting in my personal account that it says, you know, we are not to be a church, but we ought to be the church, the church. Very important, the church. So not a church of a part of the nomination, but the church, part of the family of God. You know, so there is a difference between a church, a Baptist church, a Pentecostal church, a Lutheran church, a Anglican church, those are churches. God is calling us, calling us to be the church. And listen now, the church must be the hand of God extended to the world. Oh my God. So that's the reason that Brother John has not desired to be a church. Well, God never called me to start a church over here in this region. God has called me to teach to the church. And, um, and you know, as we have people from different denominations coming and being taught the Word of God, which now in uh, YouTube, we have about 292 teachings there. Uh, and a year and a half of teaching of discipleship every week. So now we're moving away from teaching about discipleship in person and now we are becoming an outreach so I encourage you uh, pastors and leaders and I encourage people to become an outreach that means that you know buildings have become the biggest curse for us in a way and the reason is, is because we become very comfortable and we go and play church. We, we raise our hands. We know that between this time to that time, there is singing. Between that time to that time, there is announcement. Between that time to that time, there is uh, an offering be taken. And then we know that from that time to that time, they, there might be this, there might be a guest speaker or our pastor will preach. And, uh, and we know that by this time, we'll be out of this church. And that's what we do Sunday after Sunday. So what happens, we got saved for that, really. Is that what, is that what Jesus saved us? So, uh, and I'm talking generally over here, but I'm talking about a high percentage that a lot of churches, they become this, plain church. Feed me, feed me, feed me. So in, the, in, the, in that atmosphere of um, plain church, or doing the same thing Sunday after Sunday and having the same program Sunday after Sunday, then we become offended. We become fighting among each other, not, uh, not unity, but division. And what happened? We become frustrated and we have become a form of godliness by denying the power of God. Why? Because God, God has never called us to be a church. God has called us to be the church. And the church should be an outreach to the world and to those that need Christ. And then when we become an outreach and we reach those that need God, then our buildings should not be a building of plain church, but our buildings shall only be a place of discipleship, right? And we have to make sure that when we are fishing, when we, when we are an outreach reaching people that need God, we got to make sure that before we bring him into 
a place of discipleship, we got to make sure that they have the true gospel, right? Because I, I did a, vi a video recently, just a commercial four and a half video, uh, and I'll place it on uh, Facebook today or tomorrow. Uh, you see what happens when when we are people are discipling people people that have never repented. <laughs> you know, to me the gospel is believe, repentance, baptism, Holy Spirit, and Jesus is Jesus is coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle. For without holiness nobody will see the Lord. So to me, that's the gospel. But the first key to the gospel is, after belief, is repentance. That means that we have to turn away from our ways. And then once we repent, then there has to be fruits of repentance. So, and that's our job. So we are an outreach to the world. We're not a church. If we're not reaching the lost, we are not the church, we are a church. We are a Baptist church, a Pentecostal church, a Lutheran church, an Anglican church. We are a denominational church, not the church of the Bible. Oh my God, I tell you. <laughs> Thank God that the Holy Spirit is leading me in this direction because this is, a, I feel more comfortable in speaking about this. Because when we are the church, the church reaches people. But when we reach people out there, we got to make sure that they have the true gospel, that they have already repented of their ways. There are, there are fruits to the repentance. And then we bring him into a building or whatever you have to disciple them, to give them milk, to give them salad, to give them steak, and to give them dessert, so that way they can mature in the Lord, so that way they, be, they can become trees of righteousness planted by the Lord. So that means that we got to make sure that they have true salvation, and true salvation is not asking Jesus to come into their hearts. True salvation is that they have repented of their ways so God can forgive them their sins. You see, and, and that's another topic. You know, people think that, you know, we ask Jesus, oh, forgive us for our sins. And we say, oh, if you ask Jesus to forgive you, he'll forgive you. No. If you repent of your ways, God will forgive you. The Bible says, but to those that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. Then I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. So forgiveness comes in repentance. And the reason that there is no power in many churches and a high percentage of churches the reason there is no power in churches is because there is no repentance. Because the power is the fruit of repentance. The Bible says, it says there must be fruit to repentance. So you can't just invite Jesus in your heart and continue to live the way you are. Inviting Jesus in your heart is, is something that came up about 50 years ago, but it's not a biblical thing. And a lot of says, wait a minute, you know, the Bible says, you know, the picture of Jesus knocking on the door. And we use that to lead people to Christ. But the Jesus that is knocking on the door, he's not knocking on the door to somebody that don't know Christ. He was knocking on the door of a Laodicean, a backslidden church. Because they kicked him out. That's what we are today. We have kicked out God. We didn't kick out God. Well, if you're not doing things the way the Word of God tells you to do it, then you have kicked them out. You're doing things your way, not God's way. Oh, my God. So we are not a church. We're not to be a church. 
we ought to be an outreach. Why? Because we're not to be a church. We ought to be the church. And the church is a church is the church that obeys the word of God. To obey the word of God and to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, preaching, and making disciples. So that means that they have to have true conversions. That means that there has to be repentance, not only belief. And forget about asking Jesus in your heart. Repent. When you repent, then you choose God's way. Then there is fruit to your commitment to God. God forgives you for all your sins as you were born until that moment. And now you receive the new life, you baptize, and then you go on. And then we can bring people to a building to disciple people. You see, we have buildings to preach at people. <laughs> let me let me drink Argentinian mate. It's a tea. This is called a bombilla. And there's tea and water there. And then you drink it like that in Argentina. Anyway, so <laughs> so I'm not promoting uh, Tim Hortons today. <laughs> so so what happens is that the reason there is no power in our churches is because well, our churches have become a place of preaching. And we preach and we preach and we preach to Christians. You know, every time that we meet in a building, it should be a place of discipleship, right? And you can't disciple people if you're not leading them to outreach because you disciple them to become the church. And when they become the church, then the church becomes a hand extended of the Lord. And that's what in the Great Commission it says, it says, Jesus said, it says, and um, Jesus came up and said to them, all authority, all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So Jesus said, all power has been given to me. Go therefore and make what? Disciples of all the nations. Help the people to learn of me, believe in me and obey my words. Baptize them. Go and baptize them. Go and cast out devils. Go and heal the sick. Go and, and raise the dead. Go and do all of that teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always till the end. So what happens, the, 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 the call of God for us is not to accept Christ and go to a building to be preached at. So that way the, the, the man in the pulpit can, you know, jump up and down, give you nice, nice preaching so we can say, Good preaching, Pastor. That's not the purpose of our salvation. That's not the purpose to, to have people come in and just preach at them. No. That is the sign that you are a church. You're not the church. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Oh, my God. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm, I'm into something over here. Because when you are the church, then you are the hand extended of God to a dying world. Now our work that we've been doing here for a year and a half, teaching people and all of that, now we have gone to live stream. And now we're going into a, into a community, not to a church building, we go into a community and we now... Our next chapter is that we are an outreach now. So everything that we learn and everything that we, we will learn, now we got to give it. Freely, freely, you have received. Freely, freely, give. So what we receive, we need to give. We cannot be in a building playing church and being preached at and say what a wonderful message he's preaching. No, 
the building should be a place of discipleship, but the focus should be reaching the lost. And once they are, they are repentant, and, uh, and, and then when we know that there is fruits to the repentance, then we bring them into a building to disciple them, teaching them the ways of the Lord, right? And then we teach them to do what we do, right? And that is to be the church, to reach a dying world, to reach a world that needs God. Oh my God. So we are not a church, we're not to be at church. What we have today is we have churches. That's all we have is churches. But God has not called us to have churches to play church. God has called us to have to be the church. That means that the church, we don't care if we have a building or not. The church is everywhere. It's in the malls, it's in the buses, it's, it's in communities is in uh, the marketplace, is in, uh, in their jobs, in, in whatever they are. That's the church, the church in action. That means that we are the light of the world, whatever we are. And we go fishing. Jesus said, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Today, we don't have much fishers of men. Why? Because we are not the church, we are a church. Big difference. You know, God never saved us to be a church. God has saved us to be the church, the hand extended of God to a, a dying world. That's what God has called us for. So, and, and, and that's what we have to rethink the structure. You see, the pandemic that came to the world, there was a message in there that Christianity or the church is not a building. And that's the reason that we lost the power that we had. We lost our position to be the superstar or, or to be the pastor and the leader of the church. We lost all, all of that for us to get the message. You see, during the pandemic when churches were closed, that was the perfect scenario for us to be the church, the church that is the extended hand of God to a, to a people that are experiencing fear, that are experiencing all kinds of symptoms, uncertainties. But instead, we stayed with our uncertainties, with our confusions, we stayed and continued to preach that we forgot to go out and be the church, the extend the hand of God in a time of great need. And many missed it. Many missed it. Oh, we can't wait to get to our building to our building where we can see our neighbors, when we can see the people. A building where we can be preached at. That, that's, what a church, that's what churches have become. It has become a place of fellowship, not a place of winning souls, not a, not a house of prayer, not a house of God. It has become a house of men a house of the leadership of, the, of that building. Because if he was the house of God, then God will be present there. And the right message will be there that we are not to be a church, but we, are, we ought to be the church, for the church is the hand extended of God to a dying world. Oh my God. So I'm going in that direction. We are not longer, well, we were never a church. Uh, we consider ourselves the church and we disciple people and we preach repentance and all of that. But now our next chapter from November for the winter months here in the, in the Halifax area is going to be 
we are an outreach now. We are the church being the extended hand, hand of God to reach the lost. And now there's going to be requirements. People should bring at least two people to whatever we meet, whether it be in a home, whether it be in a, in a, in a, in a hall, banquet hall, but not in a church building. We're coming out of the church building because we don't want to play church any longer. We want to be the church and, when we, and we want to be an outreach, the hand extended of God to a people in need. Oh my God. I believe that that was a message from the beginning. That was a message that Jesus wanted to bring across to people. But we missed it. We got saved. So saved. Then we did evangelism. Then we got too comfortable in a building. And then we got afraid of going to the streets or, or, or to outside of the church to reach the lost. We expected the lost to come to us. And few came. And few got saved. <laughs> we gained some and we lost some. You know, churches, you know. One denomination here in Canada, the largest denomination, you know, in, in uh, 30 years ago, they had 1,100 churches. Today, 30 years later, they still have 1,100 churches. Churches that, that went into a building 100 years ago, they're still in the same building 100 years later. we not opening any other church outside. So what is that? That's a sign that we have become a church which is unscriptural. We ought to become the church because the church will obey the Great Commission to go into all the world, make disciples, preach the gospel, cast out devils, heal the sick, go after the lost. And then once they have repented of their ways and they understand the gospel, then you bring them into whatever for them to be disciple. And then once they, they have the ABCs, then you take them with you. You make them the church to be the extend the hand of God to reach a dying world and to obey the word of God. Oh, my God. So I believe that that's what God is doing in this hour. Many have not had the message over the pandemic. So it means that many have missed us. So that's the reason that that's the reason that in, in Revelations, the word of God says, return back to your first love. Okay? So that means that we had a true love at some point, and we told people about Christ at some point, but then we loved ourselves more than we love God. And that's in the scripture. In the last days, they will be lovers of themselves. They will have a form of godliness, but denying the power. And that's what we have become. Why? Because we are focused in being a church, not the church. <laughs> so, so the mentality is this, we're not called to be a church. We're called to be the church, and the church is a church is, is the church that obeys the word of God, and uh, when we obey the word of God, we go in the name of the Lord, and we do His will. Oh my God, oh my God! You see, these are messages that people don't want to hear. These are messages that don't want to hear because they, they become uncomfortable. But those that have that are older, they understand that we saw the moves of God. We saw mighty things of the Lord. And then we have fallen asleep. We have gotten away from the word of God. We have gotten away from uh, holiness, righteousness, repentance. We haven't gotten away from preaching against sin. We have gotten away from true conversions, true discipleship. We have gotten away from all of that. And we have become what we have become today, a church rather than the church. Right? 
So, and we're afraid and we'll fight that. People will fight that. I'm not fighting that. I thank, I thank the Holy Spirit for leading us in this direction. And it makes so much sense because everything that he's doing is scriptural. And it's more exciting. We just, God, I think uh, we had an option of two buildings now that are not church buildings. They're just neutral where we can invite people and we can reach people. And they will come to a place like that. To maybe feed them spiritually and physically. So that way, because we we are the church, and the church is the hand extended of God to a needy world. And I believe that that's where we're going to experience the power, the gifts of the Spirit, the miracles that the Bible talks about. The reason that we don't ex that we don't experience that is because the only thing that we are is a church. A Baptist church, Pentecostal church, a Lutheran church, Episcopalian church, a Wesleyan church. That's what we are. We are a church of a denomination, but are we a church of God? Are we having true conversion with the true gospel of repentance? Believe, repent, baptism, Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ is coming back. Making sure that we're not discipling people that have not repented. Imagine discipling an adulteress, discipling somebody that is in sin still, that has love for the world still, and we're discipling them in the things of the Lord. Or we're preaching at them. You see, the church was never birthed by preaching. The, the church was birthed in prayer and, and in the Holy Ghost. So I, I, I pray that we understand our callings. Freely, freely, you have received. You have to give out of that which you have received. Teaching them, Jesus said, teaching them the things that you have observed, right? But the reason that we're not teaching what we have observed is because we haven't observed. Christ doing it. We want to do our own gospel. That's the reason that, that the word of God says that we will have many gospels. Gospel of convenience, gospel of prosperity, gospel of this, gospel of that. Because those gospels are easier than the true gospel of repentance. If my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn away from their wicked ways. That's repentance. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. That's what the world needs. That's the true gospel. Seeking him. Turning away. Repentance. Turning away is repentance. So we no longer become a church. We become the church, the body of Christ. That whatever we go in the world, we can go and find the church and we will think alike we will hear things alike and we will all be obeying the word of God so my encouragement to you is don't be so quick in going into a building but hear hear what I what I said tonight and I believe the Holy Spirit put this in my heart which makes sense that he's not called us to be a church, but he has called us to be the church, the hand extended to of God to the world. Freely, freely you have received, freely go now and give. He said, go, 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 go. So now as we go, we teach them. I mean, we, we bring the true gospel. When they repent, then we do the steps of... of, of uh, after repentance, their baptism and receiving the Holy Spirit and, and teaching them that Jesus Christ is coming back, then we bring them to a place that they can be disciple. And then part of discipleship is to teach them what you have learned and that is now you teach them to become the church, not a church. You're teaching them to become the church and you teach them that now you are the hand extended of the Lord to the world that don't know what you know now. Oh my God. 
And then Jesus said, he said, I'm going to go to the Father. But the things that I have done, now you will do. Jesus never sat at a church. He taught at a church, but he was where? A high percentage of his ministry was where? Outside. Because he was not a church. He was the church in action. He was the hand extended of the Father to a dying world. He went to the highways and the byways. He went out to where the people were rather than waiting in church for somebody to come. And then when our tithes are down, then we say, Lord, send us some more people here so we can they can tithe more. Come on. And we're waiting. That's not scriptural. Jesus says, get out of the building. Go and reach them. Make sure they have the true gospel. Make sure they turn away from their ways. Then you disciple those that are repentant and have truth fruits of the repentance because if they are still loving the world then that means that they have not repented and if they have not repented then they cannot be saved right how can they be saved if they haven't turned away and you know we say oh you accept the Jesus in your heart okay you're saved that's a watered down gospel that's a gospel of convenience so people can add to the church. You see, you can have a lot of people in your church, but you can have a Laodicean church, a church full of people that are not repentant. You can have a, a church that is very nice people, but they're still entangled with the things of the world. That's the reason that I preach, that there is a lot of pulpits that are not saved. There is a lot of churches that are not saved. So we need to get back to our first love, to our first works. So our first love is loving God. Our first love is, is loving the people, loving yourself, loving your neighbors. That's going. So learn from Jesus, teaching them to observe what you have observed. And what I read in the Bible is that Jesus was not in a building. He went to the building to preach Teach, disciple, and speak the word of God. But his ministry was out. And in those days, they didn't have cars. They didn't have buses. They didn't have all the things. He had a donkey, <laughs> right? And he will go or he will walk, right? But that's where he made an impact. And thousands follow him. Why? Because he was out and when he was out, then God gave him the fruit of the Spirit, the miracles, the healings, the raising of the dead, all of that. God gave them that. God gave them the wisdom. God gave them all he needed. Why? Because he was out, busy, being, the church, being, the stand the hand of the Father to a needy world. And that's what we have missed. We, we do everything to keep people in the building. Brother John is going out. God has spoke to me over a month ago, out. I resign from being in a building. We were never a church. We were a school of discipleship, training people to be the church, and now we're going to be not what we were. We're going to be an outreach. The church in action. Obeying the word of the Lord. We're going to go and feed the poor. We're going to go and be there for the, for the hurting. We're going to be there for those that need a, that need a hug, that need a, a word of encouragement, that need Jesus, that need healing of their bodies. And in that atmosphere, God will do the same thing that the Father did through Jesus. He will heal people. He will deliver people. He will cast the devils and he'll raise the dead.
that's the direction that I'm going. So I encourage you, a lot of pastors that may listen even from other countries, which I know some of you follow us from other countries, teach that to the people, not to be a church, but to be the church, for the church is the hand of God extended to a dying world. Father God, I thank you for this message today. This makes so much sense. Thank you for placing this in my heart and to speaking in my heart and my life. And I'm not only listening to it, but I already made some steps towards doing what you have placed in my heart. So I pray, Father, that as I go, as we go in this direction, to not be in a church, but to be the church and to be an outreach, because that's the, ca the call of God upon us, to be an outreach, to be the hand extended of God to a dying world, to a needy people. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, guide us and lead us by your Spirit. Go before us and make every crooked place straight, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And, Father, help us to understand that even though things may be uncomfortable for a season, there will be a place where the joy of the Lord will be in our cities. And I'll say it again, when Philip, when preaching and and on the, on the road, out there, as Jesus was, there were healings, deliverance, raising the dead, healing the sick. And the word says that there was joy in the city. God, we need joy in our cities today. And help us to understand that we were never saved to be a church, but we were saved to become the church. And the church is the extended hand of the Father to a dying world. Thank you, Lord. Bless the listeners. Bless them, Father. And if anybody don't know you, oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will touch their hearts, especially for those that have religion but not a relationship, those that have form of godliness but they have denied your power, those that have become a Christian by asking Jesus in their heart, but they have not repented. They're still struggling with the things of the world because they like the things of the world. So, Father God, I pray that you will convict us all, that you will convict us by your Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. And, Lord, that we will reach out unto you and say, Lord, I repent of my ways. Lord, your ways are probably better than mine. Because I try mine and the didn't work. So, Father God, I pray, God, that they will turn their lives from their ways to your ways and accept you, O oh God, as Lord of their lives and make you Lord of their lives and to love you more than anything else in this world and lead them and guide them by your Spirit. Fill them with your Spirit. Fill them, Father, and that they will follow you in the ways of baptism, bearing the old life, being resurrected for the new life, receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father to us in the book of Acts, and to live a righteous life, a life of holiness, waiting for the return of the bridegroom to pick up the bride, us, in that day, a church without a spot or wrinkle. The church will be picked up. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen and amen. So God bless you. And if you are have not repented of your ways, okay, write me, Brother John, a revival hour, dot ca. That's Brother John, a revival hour, dot ca. That one comes directly to me. Nobody else reads it. And just tell me your story. And I want to pray for you. And if you want me to call you, I'll call you and I'll pray for you over the phone. Even if you're in India, even if you're in Africa, whatever you are, if you have repented today and you say, I want God all the way. I've been playing around with God and I don't want that anymore. I want to reap all that heaven has for me. And I want to be the church, the hand extended of God to a dying world. If that's you, write me and I'll, uh, and I'll uh, respond to you directly. I have time for you. You know why? Because Jesus 
has time for you. Amen. So whatever you are, write me and tell me you have turned your life around and uh, that I will rejoice with you. And that's the joy that the Bible talks about. So I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you and I bless you and your family. I bless you coming in and going out. I bless you and I pray that God will heal you spiritually, emotionally, physical, financially, in every way. And may the Lord meet every need in Jesus' name. And let's pray for one another. I see Darren there. Darren is going to a meeting today that he needs God. So, Father God, right now, I pray for Darren, Lord, that you will be with him in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you will go before him and destroy the works of the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. And, Lord, that this meeting will be so in you. And help him, oh God, I pray, grow in this new life in the name of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we bless him in the name of Jesus. And thank you for that. Amen. So this is Brother John for Revival Hour. And as I always say, we are fighting for you. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his light shine. And I will see you pray for us as we have become an outreach from now on. May the Lord bless you. Bye for now.